All right, hey there, welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. On today's episode, I'm gonna spend the day grinding on little by little. So springtime's on its way here. I mean, despite the fact they're calling for snow this weekend, but we're getting close. And what springtime will allow me to do is to turn this section of the shop into a paint booth where I can actually open the door. I'm gonna tarp off this whole section here, open the door, have some draft fans to try and pull out the paint fumes, and I can actually make this into a paint booth. Basically do the exact same thing I did when I painted the Project Snowman Kenworth. So. There's not a whole heck of a lot left. Of course, the last few episodes I've been working on putting in the big hole conversion that I got from truck shrouds. I put on the new cab corners, again, truck shrouds, and then the new door skins. So a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff was added to the truck. I got rid of a lot of the rot and uh, the, the flattened hucks. So if you go back and watch those previous episodes, you can see me doing all of that work. But what I wanted to do now was see if I can actually get this thing over the line. So still have to do some sanding. I gotta, get, I gotta get all the little dimples and dents out of here and try and get this as smooth as possible. There's still a bunch of uh, hucks that I need to go around and I may actually replace some of the, the flattened out ones. And then for this, these holes here, if you if, go back to that episode where I put the cab corners on, these are actually model 379 cab corners and this is of course a 359 Peterbilt little earlier vintage so they're slightly different dimensionally they're the same but the mounts for the uh for the exhaust brackets now there's no uh obviously there's no material in behind here the the mount is a little higher on the 379 so can't put the nuts right in there it won't uh, won't grab anything and hold the pipes on so i'm gonna have to drill holes a little lower and then i've got a new tool that i'm really excited to try it's a special gun that actually squeezes the 3 8 uh threaded nut certs so I'll, I'll try and mount those today and get those holes in there. Now with these, my buddy Blake from Flywell Fab has uh, offered to help me out to weld these closed. Now I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't attempt that even though I got my cool Art Captain welder, TIG welder now. It's just, this is gonna take a little bit of skill because the material is so thin. If you introduce too much heat, you can, uh, this will start to oil can and it'll, it'll just become a, a bigger problem. So I'll let, I'll let uh, Blake try and weld those closed, but the smaller holes, what I might do is just use some short strand fiberglass fill and fill those in. Same thing for the ones at the top, because Blake just figured it'd be more trouble and it's worth to try and weld those closed, because again, introducing too much heat might become a bigger problem. So I'll fill those in, drill some new holes in the top for the exhaust bracket, so that needs to get done before paint goes on. And what else? Oh, oh yeah, I got the, uh, the new visor from Daryl Bagger at Bagger Industries. Great guy out of Manitoba. He builds a lot of cool stuff. He built these stainless boxes for me as well that will eventually get on the truck once it's all painted. But what I thought I might do is take the visor out of there because it's more of a, it's not a drop visor, which is kind of like the one I had on here. It's more of a period correct uh, skinnier visor. And I'm going to mock that up. I'll probably have to drill some new holes. So I want to make sure that that's going to fit on there and be all prepped before I put paint on. And yeah, with that, I'll just keep keep grinding away like I always do here on my Saturday, and see if I can't get the can't get this truck painted by summer. All right, so I got the holes drilled, as you saw on the time lapse, for the, the nut certs. They'll go in there and I'll just get them squished, but I, I wanted to actually fill in the, the little holes around it. 
and then sand all that before I permanently mount those in there. And then I filled some of the other holes around the back and up top. And then just because my OCD was getting the better of me, I wanted to fill these holes in around the ring as well. So I'll let that harden and then I'll sand that down and try and get that as smooth as I can. But yeah, pretty happy with that. I guess what I can do now while I'm waiting is go over to the other side and drill the four holes there. Because like I always say, make use of the minutes inside the minutes. Now the nice thing on this side is I don't have to try and hunt for the original holes because if you go back a few episodes, this was all rotten in behind here and Blake actually welded in a new piece of aluminum. So now I can just, I was just trying to match up. Obviously I want the bracket to line up with where it is on the other side. So the pipes are straight and not staggered when you look at the truck from the side. Now I'm still gonna need to grind down these, uh, the heads of the huck rivets there, just so the bracket sits flush. There, something like that. Oh, that's nice. There, perfect. Okay, well maybe what I'll do now is practice squishing one of these on just a scrap piece of metal just to make sure I can uh, figure out how that gun works. And then yeah, once these get squished in here, then the, uh, the bracket can be mounted once the truck's repainted. Huh? Not bad, huh? So I actually saw this tool being used on a TikTok that popped up on my feed and uh, I thought, man, that is pretty cool. So what I did was I, I went on Amazon and just found a, found a version of this tool. And there's very few instructions. So let's see how this works here. Oh, there we go. Okay, pops into place. And now it's driven by air. <laughs> Okay, so it's just got a forward and reverse. So I think all, all you have to do is run this down. I'll put the nuts right in there, Mark. Now, if you're not familiar with these nuts, it's basically all it's doing is, is uh, it's threaded inside there. And as, it, as this tightens up and forward, it's going to pull the threads and pull this material and squish it in behind the metal to hold it in place. Yeah, pretty simple. I'll get the camera so you can see it. Oh, it doesn't have enough jam. Okay. What do you have to adjust this? Oh, this is a good one. I don't know if you can see it. It says, Peed Ops Rating Instructions. <laughs> yeah, I can't seem to find those. Now, I don't know if this, if the 3 8 is just too much for it, but I mean, why would it have a 3 8 bit if it wasn't able to squish them? It just dies. Guess I should peed the operating instructions. Huh. Wonder, did I get a dud? So I watched a few videos on this. And one of the things they said to do is you screw it on by hand so you make sure you get it on straight. And then you put it in the hole. And they say as soon as you stop, as soon as it stops, it should be uh, squished. But... Oh, thing's loud. I just, I don't get the sense that... Here, I'll show you. I mean, that's, that's not squished. This should be pulled, this should be pulled right down all that threaded area or the uh, kind of notched area should just be squished and this should have flattened right out against the material. So I don't know if the material is too thick, but I mean, that's, that's kind of the thickness that is going to be where the nuts are, it's going on the truck there. So 
what I might do is perhaps I've got the wrong uh, rib nut. It's not uh, long enough for this thicker material, but I still, I have to believe that it should squish more than that. So Blake originally, before I went and bought this fancy rib nut gun, as he was saying, you could just use a bolt and a socket and an impact and that should get it to squish. So I'm gonna try that now. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's definitely squishing it more. Let's, if some is good, more is better. Yeah, that's definitely more squished. Yeah, I suppose that's the way I'm gonna go. It seems to do a better job of really <clears throat> squishing it in there. So I don't know about that fancy $150 tool I bought. Perhaps it just doesn't have enough jam for a 3.8 stainless, but that's, that's odd to me though, because it's actually got a 3.8 drive. So it's, it's designed for this. I don't know, maybe there's, uh, there's something wrong. Something wrong with it. Maybe I'll send that one back, but I think I'll use Blake's idea and just go ahead and use the impact and squish them that way. Now, just because my curiosity is getting better, of me, I want to see if maybe it's the material thickness. So we'll try that. I got some extra. There, that's what it's supposed to look like. So what's going on here is I actually don't have the right depth of, of uh, rib nut. This should, be, this should be much taller and maybe these grooves focus. Should go up to about there. So it has more material to squish and pull through that thickness. So, so I'm learning. I mean, I guess I could just use the impact but I think what I might do is I'll see if I can get taller rib nuts that are designed for thicker material and then use the gun because that, that does actually a really nice job. Focus. There. See? That is really nice. Okay, so at least I know that works. I've got other work still to do though. I've got to sand all this down now. Oh, I love sanding. I was a little too aggressive with the, the Vivor polisher there and I popped out a few of the plugs. So I'll whip up a quick batch of fiberglass and do that again, but it worked pretty decent up here. So what I'll probably do now is just some uh, light Bondo or body filler to uh, smooth this out and then sand that all down. And then I was using the polisher because there was, looks like there was some marks from manufacturing when they pressed this. It, uh, I don't know if they had, didn't have the uh, Teflon blocks in or what, because you can see the, the teeth marks there. And I was just gonna use filler, but then since I had the polisher, I thought, why don't I just try and polish this smooth? Oh, body work's awesome. Bet your ass on that boy. All right, round two of fiberglass filler. And what I had to learn the hard way was when you're filling holes, 
little holes with uh, fiberglass filler. If, uh, if you don't have anything behind there and you touch it, you'll actually pop it right through. So there's nothing actually holding it in there. So I use some of this tape this time to tape in behind and then the fiberglass filler has something to push against and sit against. So hopefully that works. Worst case, I guess, if I just, if some of them still pop out after this time, I might just ask Blake to weld them closed. But that's looking pretty good. So once, I, once that dries, I'll be able to sand that down. And then I'm gonna get a, a drop line and try and line up the four holes so I can drill up top there and get those ready for for rib nets or rib nuts or nuts or whatever the hell you want to call them. So with that, I'm going to, like I always say, make use of the minutes inside the minutes. I only get one day a week to work on trucks. So while that's drying, I'm going to get, pick up where I left off a few episodes ago and sand this mess down and try and get that smooth. Now, one thing I'm doing differently this time is I've got my fans blowing uh, as I'm sanding to try and blow as much nonsense out the door and keep it out of my shop and off my other vehicles. So it sort of works, it's better than nothing. I mean, ideally I probably should hang the tarp, but I'm gonna wait till I start uh, painting before I start closing it all in here. Okay, Mark, let's talk more work. Your hands always the best, the best tool for finding high and low spots. Like that's this is real nice in here. I think I hit that one a little too high. It's getting there. It just it just takes time, like I always say. I mean, I got too aggressive there. I might need to add a little more filler. So what I'm using right now is just a 100 grit. What do they call it? Hook and loop. Basically, this is Velcro. I bought a bunch of these that don't have the holes in it. Because, of course, my uh, Milwaukee sander's got the holes for the little vacuum cleaner deal. I don't have it on this one. I'm just making a mess everywhere. But the fan is helping. I think it's blowing the majority of it out the door. Yeah, just hours and hours and hours, but it'll get done eventually, I promise. Well, like I always say, it's a lot of work, but progress is progress and it feels good. So I think what I'm gonna do now, I mean, there's never, there's never not something else to do, but uh, I think what I'm gonna go do now is run in and grab a quick bite to eat. And then when I come back out, I'm going to do a drip line. I'll just hang a, a string with a weight and line these holes up and drill the uh, drill the upper holes as well, but I'm pretty happy with that how that all turned out. And this, uh, this fender's coming along as well. What really takes the time is to I'm going to have to go from front to back on the truck and get and nibble out all the little bits of old crappy paint in all these little crevices. That's what really takes the time. But once that's done and I get it all nice and smooth, all the way, like I say, front to back. 
Then what I'll probably do is get some uh, etching primer, obviously build the paint booth, and then get some etching primer because since I've gone down to bare metal on the majority of the truck, I want to make sure the, the primer and paint's going to stick. So I'll, I'll get some etching, maybe get a couple quarts of that and lay that on there. And then I'll put the high build primer, let that dry, and then I'll sand that down, wipe it all down, and then pick out my blue paint. Man, I can't wait. All right, I think that's enough sanding for now. I, uh, I think I got my fill of it for the day, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot and see if I can't mock up that new uh, visor from uh, Beggar Industries. But I just had this dropped off from FedEx and I wanted to check it out because I, uh, I think this is gonna be pretty cool. So I was uh, talking to the guys at Truck Shrouds and I was telling them about how the old school trucks, um, Kenworth, Peterbilt, Freightliner, Western Star, uh, back in the 70s and into the early mid 80s, they used to have the air conditioner condenser up on the roof of the cab. So you'll see that if you look up, if you go to an auto wrecker, if you look at pictures of old trucks that have been restored to period correct, they'll still have that condenser up on the roof of the cab. And then there's a fiberglass condenser cover that goes over top of it. The air conditioner, I know a lot of folks are making comments that says, you know, why don't, why don't you leave that up there, get it operational again, it's pretty rare. Now, typically the condenser covers that are on the trucks that have been sitting outside for the last 40, 50 years, they're usually dry or rotted out, cracked out, just sun bleached, ears might be broken off, and you can't find original ones. So I actually had one on the Peterbilt here, and I was actually going for the cleaner look of not having the original condenser cover on the roof. Instead, what I was planning is to get a uh, condenser off a newer 379 model where it goes right in front of the radiator underneath the hood. So there's this cool trucker by the name of Donovan. Uh, I'll put a clip of him driving his wicked 359 Pete with a KT600 Cummins engine, which is just an absolute dream engine of mine. And the thing's got twin sticks in it. Has a six and four originally, but I think the six blew up and he converted it to, I think he put a 10 speed as his main. But when I, I was, uh, I read that his six had blown up, that was part of the reason I wanted to pull my six out of here and send it to the gear center. So they're working on it right now. Anyway, get to the point, Mark. So the condenser cover that uh, Donovan had on his 359 Pete, he actually smacked into a bird. I don't know if it was a seagull or what he hit, but it, it smashed his uh, fiberglass shell that goes over the condenser up on the roof. So he reached out to me on Instagram. He said, Mark, are you willing to sell yours? Because I wasn't going to use it anymore. I said, yep. So I met him, cool guy, showed me his truck and I sold him that, uh, that cover. Then on the snowman truck, same thing. I had a condenser cover that was in decent shape. Someone else reached out to me and said, hey, can you get me a, will you, are you willing to trade your condenser cover for a grill dancer that matches the movie? So I traded that one. And so now on my third truck, I had a condenser cover on that as well, because it was up on the roof. And I'm still debating what I'm gonna do with the cab over, whether or not I'm gonna leave the uh, air conditioning in the truck as it stands. It looks to be all there, so maybe I just need to run some new lines and then charge it back up. So I was actually gonna keep that third, my only condenser cover. But I got talking with the guys at Truck Shrouds and of course the, the whole company was started because they wanted to develop a fiberglass surround that goes around the, en uh, the engine fan, which helps to guide and pull the air through the radiator to keep the engine cool. Now they noticed that nobody actually was supplying these, so they started making their own. So I got talking to them about that and I said, you know what, nobody is making condenser covers of uh, the old style condenser cover, which they're a standard size, uh, anywhere. I can't seem to find them. You can't get one from Peterbilt or, or uh, Packard or anyone else. Nobody seems to supply them or manufacture them anymore. So they asked me nicely, I said, Mark, will you send the last condenser cover that you have from your cab over down to us and we'll model it. We'll make a mold and we'll start making new ones. So this is what they sent me back. But yeah, this must be the one here. This is the one they made. Okay. Cause yeah, it's way heavier and nice and solid. Beautiful work guys. Beautiful work. So since they sent me a brand new one, I'm going to have to mount this up on the, uh, on the Iron Duke. But if you're interested, if you've got an old 
if you've got an old big rig and you've got the uh, condenser up on the roof and you want to get a new condenser cover because yours is all smashed up, go check out Truck Shrouds. Reach out to them. Great bunch of guys. They've got everything you need for, for panels, for door panels, for cab corners, the big hole conversion, and now they're making condenser covers. So that is awesome. Man, that's so nice. I almost want to go back to the old school and put that on there. <laughs> Beautiful job, guys. Beautiful. Okay, let's see what this new, uh, this new visor looks like. So again, Baker Industries out of Manitoba. Daryl Baker actually uh, makes all of these. Makes a lot of cool truck stuff. So go check them out at Baker Industries on Instagram. So Daryl manufactures these, and I kind of, I really like the look of them. Just because they're, the, uh, they're in the old school, style so this truck's kind of a mix of both old school and new school i mean i've got giant eight inch pipes someone commented on one of my posts or i don't know maybe it was one of my videos and they said that's a nice 389 you got there <laughs> that was pretty good yeah i know i'm kind of doing a blend but this is uh this is like i've always said this 359 is my dream truck. It's got the six and four twin sticks. It's got a big old cat and I just, I love it. And I'm building it up exactly the way I think a perfect truck should look. It's almost like a reverse bow tie. And it's a lot smaller than the previous one I had. Uh, Daryl sends the nut certs, but I think I might just uh, huck this on there. But I just want to see, see how it looks on the truck. Yeah, so I'll bolt that together and then put it up top and see where the holes need to be. Hopefully they're in the same spot and I don't need to drill any new ones. If you just want to mount this in your interiors in, you can't get in behind there. You'd have to pull your whole interior to put this on the truck, which does, you know, it seems like a lot of work. So that's why he offers those. But since my interior is completely out of the truck, it wouldn't take much to put a huck bolt through and then uh, the collar and in behind. So that's probably what I'll do. How that looks. Oh yeah. Just kind of that, it, it's got a meaner look to it. All right. Something like this. There it goes. Okay, how's that look? Oh yeah, I still gotta get this bug guard off of there. That looks really good. Yeah. Just imagine that once the, once it's shiny stainless. Well, should I peel it back? Yeah, I gotta see it shiny. Hang on. There, let's try that. Oh yeah. That's the look I was going for. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. I can't wait to get those stainless step boxes put on there eventually as well. But that's nice. That's nice. Thank you, Daryl. Looks really good. I'm just doing a quick walk around to see how much more work I, I have to do. And of course, whoever painted this previously just flattened these right out. I mean, you can barely tell there's a rivet there. But if you look, they're actually buck rivets. So if I'm feeling ambitious, I still got the uh, the gun that Blake loaned me. So I probably could because I do have enough. So maybe I will drill those out and put new buck bolts there. Because if you saw in that episode where I just put three pieces of tape over it and hammered them, I was actually getting pretty good. So I'll do that. Obviously still need some, some sanding on the back here. A little bit of filler, but not, not too bad. It's coming along. I'll mask off the window. I think I still got to do some sanding up top on the fiberglass cap. And that's something I need to figure out as well is how am I going to reach the, uh, when I finally go to paint this thing. I mean, I guess I could put a, one of these platforms here. I mean, that seems pretty safe, right? And that'll put me up a little higher so I could probably at least reach the center line 
and spray back and forth and spray forward. And then I can go around to the back, put another one of these platforms and the stairs at the back, grab the wet edge and go back. So I should be able to, that's part of the reason I'm leaving the, the bunk separate from the cab. So I have this space in here to stand because of course, if the bunk was tucked up tight against the cab, then I wouldn't be able to reach. I'd barely be able to reach the back of the cab here. And I'm sure as heck wouldn't be able to reach on top of the bunk. So I'll leave them separate, plastic this off, tape it all off. Look at that condenser cover. That is sweet. Okay, I'm getting distracted. I think what I might do is something easy. I'm just going to try and clean up my mess. Put that beautiful stainless visor, wrap that in a moving blanket so it doesn't get damaged. And then I'm just going to... Uh, just going to grind away and try and uh, clean up as much as I can before I take, uh, take the missus out for Saturday night dinner. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you learned something. Feel free to comment down below. As always, if you don't mind hitting the like button, that helps to drive the YouTube analytics, get it out to, uh, get it out to more folks. And uh, with that, I'll wish you farewell. Hope to see you next week. And don't forget, if you got it, truckers brought it.